In my last video, I did a live stream and my wife was in that video. One of the questions we asked her was, what is your wife's favorite fish or tank? What is it, Tanya? What do you like? Oh, you don't like Frank? You're gonna cause, you're gonna cause a riot. I guess I should have prepped her prior to it because what she didn't say was Frank. So what was her favorite fish in the entire gallery? Okay, just as, I'm gonna apologize uh, for formally for Tanya in advance for saying is Frank is not her favorite, but what is it? The, the colorful ones. The colorful ones? Yeah. Which ones? These guys? No, those aren't colorful. <laughs> the peacocks. And you know what, I can't blame her. These are probably the most colorful fish in the entire gallery and one of the most active, always presenting themselves always acting like a bunch of starving lunatics. Absolute blast to have. If you guys remember, this is a Malawi aquarium with all male peacocks. Now, when I made that video when I was live, some of you noticed that the OB peacocks that I got previously that I wanted to add to this aquarium are already in it. Now, we've added a ton of fish to the aquarium gallery, and every time we unbox new fish, I talk about the quarantine process and the steps that I take to ensure that I don't contaminate the rest of the gallery. However, contamination can happen as easy as using a net that uh, netted up some sick fish and you use that on a uh, healthy aquarium like I did previously where my Waru tank actually got ick. Now I use that opportunity to show you guys how to cure ick, but I also talk about the idea of expediting your quarantine process. You see, usually I talk about quarantining your fish for four to six weeks, but I also have a method that you can quarantine fish in as little as 10 days and add them to your main display. Bottom line, before we move any further, regardless of where you get your fish, you bought them from a friend, you got them from the store, you got them from a trusted source, based on your experience, you don't get fit these types of fish. I don't care what you say or what your experience is or what your excuse is, quarantine your fish regardless of where they come from. Now my quarantine process is simple like this. I set up a bare aquarium with simple filtration and heating. I do nothing else. I simply monitor the fish for four to six weeks. During this time frame, any external parasites or internal parasites or any sort of bacterial infections or any other symptoms are going to show their face within that time frame. I say four to six weeks. For example, it was three weeks of my vieja in the, their aquarium before they showed signs of ick. They carried that parasite for three weeks before anything happened. Sitting in front of the 2000 gallon aquarium with the freshwater stingrays though, reminds me of a story. In 2009, the Bosmani stingray, which is a freshwater stingray from Suriname, was scientifically described for the first time. In 2011, I got my hands on them. Only a very small amount was actually uh, imported to North America. And by small amount, I believe it was less than 20, but they were having massive die-offs and nobody knew why. In fact, it came to the point where a lot of people thought that I had one of only three remaining in the entire world at that time. Now there's a ton more being imported and, and, and distributed all over the world these days. However, at that time in the very early years, a lot of people were under the impression that almost all of them died off. And I believe it was due to a bacterial infection. So here's what I did. The benefit of the Bosmani Stingray is it was such an aggressive feeder. No matter what I gave it, it would pounce at that food no matter what. So I knew that if it had something internal wrong with it, I could just treat its food with some sort of anti-parasitic medication and I would have success with it. At the same time, I could treat the outside of it as well in case there was some sort of bacterial or maybe some parasite that I wasn't seeing. Fortunately though, freshwater stingrays tend not to get a lot of external parasites. And in fact, I've never heard of a freshwater stingray getting ick before. Why is this? Well, I believe it's because of two reasons. One, their base of their uh, body is constantly, or their bellies are constantly rubbing up against a brace of sand. Nothing's really getting the opportunity to attach to it. Even though this is a very soft material under their bellies, entirely soft, it's silky smooth on the bottom. On the tops of them though, kind of feels like sandpaper. You see, everybody knows that stingrays don't really have scales. Well, they kind of do. They have something called denticles. Or of course, to be more specific, dermal denticles. Now, if we zoom right in on these, you'll see that this is almost like having a bunch of extremely tiny scales, like very tiny armor plating. This stuff feels 
just like very fine sandpaper. If you've ever touched a ray, it's very confusing. The tops of them feel like sandpaper, the bottoms of them simply feel like silk. I believe that because of their denticles, their, that parasites simply cannot attach or get in through them in order to start feeding off of the fish. So a lot of times rays are referred to as a scaleless fish where they're kind of not but one fish that is scaleless is the clown loach. Now you guys know that these guys are just covered with their skin. Typically speaking, this is what all fish look like except they have scales on top of it. Now a lot of the time scaleless fish are highly susceptible to external parasites simply because they're so easy to attach to, but it also means they're highly susceptible to medication. So a lot of the times we just dose half of the recommended dose for scaleless fish. By the way, on the topic of scales and the fact that we're in front of the 2000 gallon aquarium with some Asian arowana, check out the scales that they have. This is just one scale. This is two scales. These scales get a heck of a lot bigger. These were actually from my fish buddy, my other Asian arowana that passed away uh, a little while ago. But uh, every once in a while, they can bang themselves up and shed a scale. But if it just goes to show, you see how hard these are. This is like armor plating. Even though the Bosmati stingray was eating so vigorously, something was still attacking her from the outside. I didn't know what it was. However, we've already covered the fact that scaleless fish can be very susceptible to medications. You can even kill them at full doses and half doses. Sometimes they aren't strong enough. And I didn't want to kill this ray, but I also still need to treat her. So I did the following. Since she was such a vigorous eater, I decided I'm going to go from the inside out. I decided I'm going to medicate her food. I took four ounces of her frozen food and added in some Metro Plus. This is a medication that can be treated as a bath, like you can add it to the water column or you can add it directly to their foods. Now this stuff is a powder, so something that I prefer to do is mix it with a very tiny amount of water. Now I think you're supposed to actually mix it with like 190 proof grain alcohol but I don't have any of that, so I typically did it with a little bit of water, and since the froed food was already frozen, I knew that uh, it was going to be able to thaw it out, and this food was going to attach to it. To ensure I was going to be able to attach to it, I made sure I used some focus. Now, this is by Seachem. It essentially me uh, allows the food to chemically bind to the, the medication to chem chemically bind to the foods, use it in a ratio of five to one. So for example, one scoop of this to five scoops of Metro uh, on about four ounces of food works well. Now I'll mix that up, add it to the food, stir the food into it, and I fed it to the Bosmani. She ate it while it was barely in the water column. And the reason why we use this uh, focus is simply because a lot of the times when you are medicating foods and you drop it in the water, that medication simply uh, leeches off of the food and the fish aren't actually eating it or consuming it. I fed her medicated foods for a week and she slowly started to improve. The next thing I thought was maybe she has some external parasites, maybe she has something, some gill flukes or you know some sort of parasite that is slowly killing her on the outside so I half dosed with Prazi Pro and I did that for a week as well. I didn't dose at the exact same time, I did this over a two week period she moved on to live, she was extremely healthy, got very big, and eventually she bred to one of my male Motoro stingrays, which ended up producing a hybrid pup, but this was the first time that a Bosmani stingray had bred in captivity. Having that success with that Bosmani, I transferred everything that I did with her to other fish. So nowadays, when I get a fish that is an aggressive eater like that Bosmani once was, I will medicate their foods when I first get them, just like I did with the peacocks, and that's why I was able to add them so quickly to their aquarium. For the first three days, I tried to induce any external parasites that are temperature dependent, like ick, for example. During those three days, the ick should be able to go through its life cycle to the point where it at least shows its face on the fish. If I don't see any ick, I'll move on to medicating their foods. However, these guys are on a dry based food, but I do the same thing as the frozen foods. I mix up a little bit of Metro with the focus, a little bit of water, add it to their pelletized foods, stir it up. I let that dry. A lot of times I'll go ahead and put it near a warm surface so it dries faster and then simply feed them. Again, the levels of medication are gonna vary based on the size of your fish, but Metro a lot of times can be added to the water column. I prefer to medicate the foods. Uh, so about four ounces of food, five scoops of this, a scoop of the 
uh, focus and you're good to go. I feed them a medicated food for at least five days. Then I start medicating the water for external parasites. Usually I'll go with Prazi Pro simply because it's gonna cover a lot of the most common uh, external parasites and worms that you'll see in a freshwater fish. And I'll do that for another uh, five to seven days as well. So instead of needing to quarantine these guys for four to six weeks like I typically would, if the fish is healthy, vigorous and readily eating, I'll put them through a medicated quarantine process that only lasts two weeks. I should probably add that none of these companies are sponsoring me or gave me any of this for free. I did pay for it. Use the medications that you are comfortable with and the ones that you can commonly find. You don't have to use this. In fact, I would highly suggest you don't do the medicated process unless one, you absolutely need to, or two, you have a bit of experience with medicating your fish in the first place. So clearly you can see why this is Tanya's favorite aquarium. We now have what is probably the most colorful uh, fish in the entire gallery. This is my most colorful fish for sure with so many varieties and vivid coloration, yellows, blues, reds you know, uh, everything you can imagine in terms of color. And these guys look far more impressive in person. With that said, I guess I have a couple of confessions. One is that I used to absolutely despise Malawi cichlids. I found that every Malawi aquarium looked the same. It was like everybody kept housing the same fish, never really gave them a, ch a chance. And of course, that's my own ignorance from simply not researching them enough or actually giving them a chance. But I gotta say, if you kind of feel the same way about it or if you're kind of sick of seeing Malawi cichlids or bunas or whatever the case might be from uh, lakes in Africa, for example, my suggestion would be to just give them a try. These guys are absolutely stunning, extremely colorful, easy to keep very active they'll eat whatever you offer them as long as you give them optimal water quality and stock them properly and to be honest this is the aquarium that everybody loves when they come into the gallery for those that don't know fish the 2000 is always impressive and the others are extremely interesting and catch their eye but they always come back to this aquarium so if you have an office or you want to add one to a school or just add a splash of color and zen to your living space go ahead and get some of these guys astonishing fish i love them and i guess that brings me to my second confession which is these guys are now unofficially my favorite aquarium <laughs>